Welcome to the first turn. I'm your host, codename Hyena, and today I am joined by Llama, where we talk about detachments and sub-faction predictions for Warhammer 40k, 10th edition. We also talk about the newest Warhammer Age of Sigmar meta watch, faction standings, and what the balance changes are going to do for some of the outlying factions, and more. Enjoy. What do we haven't talked about today? We had um, we had the meta watch, meta which watch for AOS. Uh, which is funny because um, again I, I saw a thing that said the seventh the seventh uh, meta watch in a row. Cruel boys are are dead last. <laughs> seven seven in a row, um, and it's it's sad because they launched third edition with cruel boys. Yep. Right. Uh, and a pile of new models for them. And yet the army was just so understated. They've never had over a run. They've never had a run. Right. I mean, they the I think they're overvaluing the idea that the army can do mortal wounds. That could I think they're vastly overvaluing because it it's like. Sure, there's a chance every single swing does a mortal wound in melee, but or not even melee, just anything. But you don't have any durability to back it up. So what? So you can put a little bit of damage out, okay? But you can't take a punch at all. The normal cruel boys like battle line. We were looking at those today, which they're one of the units that got targeted for a buff. And this is a great example of just like here is this unit that is overly complicated, overcosted, underperforming. <laughs> It's their it's their core battle line, right? Which is the called the gut rippers. Yeah. It's the guys with the the angry shields and the hacker axes, uh-huh. the hacker uh-huh. axes. Um, these guys have two swings, fours and fours, no rend one. Very mediocre weapon profile. I don't know if I'd want them to be better in melee than that, but okay. they need to be less in points, right? They're they're fifteen points a piece for a two one guy with a five up save. Could be better, right? Could be a little cheaper. Um, could have an extra special rule of some kind. Well, they did get one of their 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 one special rule they have improved, which was um, before. Oh my god, the wording on it was so stupid. I I have to read you this wording because it is just so ridiculous. Read uh, the original. Uh, I, I, yeah. The new yes. One. yes. Yeah. The original wording is it's so funny. Like it freaking cracks me up. It's called. Uh, let's see. It's called something stupid. Too. Is it the gut rippers rule or the cool boys rule? It's the gut rippers rule. They have, they have on their sheet. It's called Scare Tactics. So they're boogeymen. Booga booga, jump out at you. Here is their rule as currently stands. Uh-huh. <coughs> so bad. At the start of the charge phase, so before charges are made, if this unit is more than three inches from all enemy units, so out of melee combat, you can pick one enemy unit within 12 inches of this unit. Okay. 12-inch range ability at the start of the charge phase. <clears throat> and that unit is not a hero or monster, so it doesn't affect heroes and monsters, and roll 2d6. Add one to the roll for every five models in this unit. <laughs> if the roll is equal to or greater than the bravery characteristic of the unit you chose, subtract from hit subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made by that enemy unit that target this unit until the end of that turn. So here's this small benefit. The enemy unit needs to not be in combat with you, with your unit. But within 12. But within 12. You need to exceed their bravery characteristic on a 2d6 roll. You need then need to get into combat with them, so charge them. And then they need to attack you, this unit, just to get a minus one to hit. <laughs> and it doesn't affect heroes or monsters. Yep. It's like, man, that is a lot of hoops just for a minus one to hit debuff. Just for not that good. Not point. even that good. And so the new rule is as follows. Change the scare tactics ability to subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by enemy units that are not heroes or monsters that target this unit. See, how simple is that? The end. Right? Like, no more rolling, no more nominating a unit, and then they got to be out of combat for it. It's like, no, these guys are just spooky. Their spooky shields make it so that if you target them and you're not a hero, some someone heroic or something yeah. monstrous, you're a little scared of them. So yep. you're minus one to hit them. Simple. Yep. That might make them worth their 15 points per model. And you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. That is one of those like simplified. Not simple. Yeah. Because that didn't like dumb down what they were doing before. Right. This is not only straight up better. It's just so much cleaner to read, easier yep. to understand. Yeah. So it's great. 
But that, and then uh, their their boogeyman tactics that their army the gets. Dirty tricks. Their dirty tricks. They get two of them instead of one now, yeah. too. Which, the dirty tricks are pretty good. And so, getting two of those, plus this buff to their battle line, eh, I, I, I think know. I think what they want, they, they've been scared to do it, but what they're hoping is to get that, like, 3 to 4% higher win rate than what they currently have, right. they'll feel better. Yeah. And, and even then, while their target is between 45 and 55% for armies, that doesn't mean when something's at 45, they're okay with it just staying down there. Right. Um, but, yeah, it was the one army that was still, and has perpetually been, in dead last. Mm-hmm. So, that might do it. I mean, that'll help, for sure. Um, the the fact that the Swamp Kala has the ability mm-hmm. to cast spells now while he's dishing out poison, that was the last Battle Scroll update they gave him that ability. He doesn't have to give up his spell casting to give the, uh, the Mortal Wounds on 5 up. So... I mean, it's it's slowly things that are adding up. I want to see also the um, the Hobgrots get just the ability to do mortal wounds as well. Yep. There's no reason why they shouldn't have that too. <clears throat> with, the, with their little nail bombs I that are eight at range, grenade, like yeah. like give it to them. Like it's not going to be broken. It's it'll be fine. Yep. You know, because they're still dying to everything. Right. Um, so I mean, we'll see. Um, I I think it's also funny that the other like six lowest percent army are like all the ones I play. Which will crack me up. Slaves, yeah, yeah. one. Slaves is one. Uh, Skaven's not doing great. They're uh, at like 48. Uh, Stormcast aren't doing great. They were down there at 46 or 47. And that, I wonder if it's by volume. Seraphin aren't doing great. Because there's always... <laughs> I'm looking at my shelf and it's like, yeah. ooh. <laughs> Seraphin will wait until June. Yeah. But... Uh, Ideneth. <laughs> it's down there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all my armies are, are at the bottom. But Lumineth are crushing. Yeah. But um, I want to play the Lumineth. <laughs> I know, exactly. Um, you know, that, that interesting mm-hmm. uh, thing with, uh, what did you say a couple hours ago? You said Skaven, you said... Stormcast. Stormcast. Lizardman. So the Stormcast one is interesting, and I wonder if it's a by volume. And, and the reason I say it is because at every major event or mid-event, there's a Stormcast in that top four. It's all, true. Always makes it. Yeah. And it's not necessarily the same list every time, because they're sheer variety, sort of. Loosely, we say variety because we know they have a lot of functional redundancy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wonder if just so many people play it, and a lot of them maybe are beginners or just very casual, and they go to a tournament and go o three 3 or whatever, mm-hmm. and that affects their stats. Because I feel like they're a better army than a 46%. So I think there are very specific builds you can do that are just bonkers. Like going Pout and Heavy Deep Strike list, I mean, it's like, what do you do? Super good. Because it's like you can end up, your entire army can start nine inches away, they do mortal wounds when they land. It's all three up or two up save things that all do big ren, big damage, big mortal wounds, whatever. Like, I think a powder heavy army is the scariest, one of the scariest things in the game, honestly. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, yes, they're expensive, but in certain chapters, storm hosts, you don't need, you don't need battle line because they become battle line. So you can cut out all the chaff and just do this null deploy paladin list. They can just. So maybe the army you know, with the most options doesn't do well with a balanced list. Yeah, I can see that. Because okay. the other one is like full Drakoth list. Yeah. You just go all heavy calf. So yeah, when they go when they know, go ultra elite. dragon riders and yeah. And then we saw um, yeah slaves are not doing well either, and they're brand new, so that's that's rough. Um, that just goes to show you that it's a big whiff. So a couple of the things they listed there are name character Eternus is not good enough. They yeah, lowered him. He went down twenty five points. They also lowered just the generic demon prince. Yep. Which my gripe about that. Having recently played a Demon Prince in a tournament recently, is that the Demon Prince does nothing that a foot hero does. Like, doesn't do anything better than a foot hero. Okay. Like, because he's, he's got five swings with his melee weapon. Okay, what else you do? That's it. Yeah. And, like, he doesn't do anything. It was, it was almost a 200 point plus two wounds. That's it. He doesn't do anything more. Right. You know, they, they made all of his special rules dependent on Mark. And it becomes a, a heroic action, which you only do one heroic action per turn. If they could do their heroic action in addition to other heroic actions being performed, I could see it. But the fact they turned this, I think this is a case of them wanting to capitalize on a new mechanic for an addition, namely uh, monstrous rampages and heroic actions, that they're turning too many things into monstrous rampages and heroic actions. <laughs> you know, I think it's one of those kinds of things because, man. He just doesn't do anything for that 195. So they went the opposite direction they have for a lot of other things. Yeah. Where instead of putting everything he can do on his data sheet, mm-hmm. they made him vanilla. Yep. And you have to waste your yep. precious resources to exactly. Buff him up. And then when he does, when you do buff him, he doesn't do anything because he doesn't fight very well. 
It's only just five swings at three, three minus, I mean, with the axe, I guess, minus two, two, which is fine. But like foot heroes are about that kind of level as well. So one thing they did do is they, they gave him three weapon options, sword, axe, claws, but they didn't make it so that if you just choose not to go claws, you don't get just like a couple of claw attacks. Nope. They took the claws away entirely. So he's just got an empty hand and like, I'm allowed to swing with this because I'm holding an axe. <laughs> so like if they if he was <clears throat> demon prince stats like he was before, where if you went double claws, yeah. you were like ten swings or something. But if you went one claw, you were three swings with the claw and then five right, with your main right, weapon. Right, it was your horse attack, basically. Right. Yeah. If they did that, it's like, okay, then I could see that that unit being worth that 195. But as it stands, it's just like for a few swings with a weapon, it's just... He is now a foot hero. He doesn't do who anything. Who sometimes flies. So they lowered him 25 points, and that's, I think, still not good enough. Like, What about a turn though? Do we think that's good enough for him? But now, I uh, mean... Now, his sub-faction, I don't know if he's getting much which play is, at all. So, the Bellacor army is very interesting. I've played against it a couple times here recently, and you can it's it's very finessey. It did not work for my opponent, because he fell into, like, a, I, I think, a foreseeable pitfall with it. Mm. And it's it's all about like mark manipulation. You can like designate a unit that doesn't have a mark to gain a mark for a turn every turn. So like the old Varengard, a little bit. Yeah, rules. yeah, it's a little bit like that. But what that allows you to do is enable you to like give mark buffs out to a unit that wouldn't have a mark normally, you know, the same mark. And so like you can do some cool stuff with like Slanesh giving a unit. Slanesh for a turn so they can charge 3d6 with a plus 4 inch charge. Yep. That kind of thing. And, and just have this gigantic, just massive threat range. Run and charge plus plus 4 inches plus roll 3d6 instead of 2d6. Like, you can have this, like, 30 inch threat range. <laughs> but what was funny is my opponent, uh, because he took an undivided demon prince and an undivided unit, he can only give one of them the Slanesh keyword. He couldn't give it to both of them. And so because you need a Slanesh hero to issue the command... He gave the unit mark of Slanesh, but then the Demon Prince was still undivided and then couldn't issue the order. <laughs> so he was like, whoops. And it's like, yeah, that's a mistake. Well, and, so they, and then they lowered Knights and Warriors a pinch, yeah. 10 points each. Which is fine. And then the Castle Lord and Karkadrak, Karkadrak went down 20. Which is also fine. And the Theradons, which we liked, went down 20. Yeah. We, we thought Theradons were this close to being good. Uh, well, there's, with, other, there's other monstrous infantry that kind of out yeah, punch them. The Chosen kind of do yeah. a lot more work. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm sure Croxers uh, would be sexy. Uh, uh, but it's interesting because if you look at um, the the because we were comparing uh, Minotaurs mm -hmm. to the Theradons and how they're they're kind of the same. Yep. But Theradons are now 170 for three, and Minotaurs went up to like 210. Okay. So they went up a pinch, even though the Theradons went down, even though they have a basically the same the same stat line. Well, the Doom Bull went up. Yeah. The bull Which board. he needed to. Bull Good Lord. Up, yeah. Jesus. The Doom Bull being like 140 or whatever he was. He was 160. 160 before. It was yeah. like unreal. He it was so to a Demon Prince. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, so he went up, which is good, because he was unreal for that. And then the, the Doom Bull, or the, um, the Bull Gores went up to 210. Yep. So... Basically, those two units have the same stat line, but it just goes to show you the, the army rules themselves can carry... Make a big difference. Yeah, can carry a unit to victory. Yeah, Lumineth, they, they went up mostly. And I noticed something, though. Hmm. In these armies that were, like, overperforming, like Beast, Lumineth, Zinch, there were upticks in points, but then clearly units that weren't getting played, right. they still brought down. Yep. So so it's not like they're just take, take, take from the armies that are winning, although Zinch just only got increases. <laughs> it's funny. I think from addition to addition in Age of Sigmar, Zinch has always had these runs. Where they're super strong. And it's like their speed, their magic, their range is just really hard to balance. Mm -hmm. And so even though they keep ticking them up points, and you and I will look at it and be like, oh, I just don't know if they're good. They're so expensive mm -hmm. now. And then these mana watches will come out. It's like Zinch is still 58 to 60%. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like they still win. It just shows like the power of that.
And then generic BRB rules changes included the Hero Face Command Ability Rally yep. and the Universal Artifacts of Power Arcane Tome. So Rally, you were trying to explain that that's not that big of a deal. But so, yeah. So I didn't think Rally was that big of a problem, mostly because the restrictions you already have. You can't use it in combat. So if you're tied up, you don't get to Rally. But when it comes to, like, rallying big models, it, I, it like, I can see a problem. Things like um, Varengard, for example. If you were to reinforce Varengard up to six models, a couple of them die, and you're... Uh, the ever chosen sub faction. You have to. You have a bonus to rally every single five up you roll, which is the new rule. Instead of it being a four up, mm-hmm. like it originally was written mm-hmm. in, every five up you bring back a five one model. That's a bit much, you know. Like that's yeah. that's pretty nutty. Well, that's one example, but other armies uh, have units that also rally on better numbers, and so one of their changes that they that they made here is to make it so that you can only rally up to ten wounds of combined yep. combined wounds of, of models. For the most part, it doesn't matter. You know, if you've got a unit of 10 guys, 10 Stormcast guys, and you're rallying on sixes and you roll, you know, half of them die and you roll five dice, you're not going to roll five sixes and bring back all five of them. Even if you did, that's still allowed uh, in, yeah. with this rule. Yeah. You know, if you had nine do- guys die and one guy left, what they don't want happening is you rallying, spiking like crazy and bringing back the whole unit. Right? Okay. So now they've limited it to 10 wounds total. So for things like ogres, now you can only bring back two ogres at a time whenever you rally, no matter how many you're dead. Well, even, and even like or, the one hard hidden unit in cast, chosen, you know, less of them would come back. Well, you still have to rally four in, in one go <laughs> yeah. for it to matter. Because you can still rally three of them total. That still only, only adds up to nine wounds. Yeah. But like I said, with Varengard, if you rally three Varengard, 15 wounds back, that's a problem. Um, things like. Uh, rat ogres would be a problem because you can monstrous bring infantry. monstrous infantry. Yeah, because yeah, rat yeah. ogres are six wounds each. Yep. So you ride two rat ogres back to life. That's twelve wounds back. Or storm fiends yep. at six wounds apiece. Anything like that where it's like it's so many wounds. Yeah. I can see. I can see why they did it. For the most part, at that number, it it's not going to matter from game to game, unless you have a strategy built around rallying yeah. giant monster. Uh, you know, models. It's not going to matter. I wonder if there was something in Zinch Demony that was doing that too. It could be. I, I know I know uh, Beastmen had some banners that allowed them to rally better. And so I'm wondering if like a big unit of like Bestigors, for example, because they're units of 10 and their battle line, you could have a unit of 30 of them. They're two wounds a piece and they rally on a five up, I think. They just lowered their points. And so if you had something where, but I think that might be to compensate for that. Okay, sure. So, but if you had like, you know, 20 of my 30 die and I roll... So here's a bucket of dice to rally. 20 dice. How many five-ups you're going to get? Six or seven? Well, they don't want you r- like rallying six or seven guys and getting 15 wounds back. Or, <laughs> you know, or 14 or, you know, 12 or 14 wounds back. So, I mean, like, I get it. Toning it back is fine. Like like I said, I don't think you're going to notice it in most games. Okay. But but the Arcane Tome change is, yeah. is pretty huge. Because uh, it's, it's a three-fold... Call it a three-fold nerf. One... You can't bring it on things that are already wizards. Yep. That's a big one. So a lot of people were bringing the Arcane Tome to give a di- an additional cast to a wizard who could already cast. So one more spell every turn. Right. Well, that's a big deal. A lot of the that wizards is. are balanced around only being cast a limited number of spells. I didn't even, I didn't even know that was happening. Yeah. But, but I suppose when I started looking at lists then, it was like every list just was like Arcane Tome. Arcane Tome. Arcane Tome. Arcane Tome. Uh, so there was that. Two, they made it so that you couldn't enable combos by having both a a, a priest take it and become a wizard as well. Because right, that was another problem. Because right. there's a lot of like uh, like prayers that are basically unbindable spells. Because they do a very similar thing. Like think of Stormcast Lightning Chariot. It was a prayer that allowed you to relocate a unit. Well, if you could relocate a unit and then cast a spell afterwards, all of a sudden you are moving. In range to cast a spell, moving yeah. before you cast. And where I, a lot of spells are balanced around the fact that command face happens before movement, you know? So, and then the third one was, corn. You, uh, well, corn, I mean, who cares? Like, that's uh, that's minor. I, I, Were there people doing that with priests? Yeah, I think so. Just like, to be able to get, like, Arcane Shield. Like doing the priest prayer to, to pull a unit close and sure. bolt them or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, I mean, all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. Um, or Arcane Shield, yeah. Yeah, uh, that kind of thing. Arcane Shield plus, you know, uh, Brazen, or what is it? Or wait, bronze bronze mi- Flesh. Mystic Shield 
arcane bolt. There you go. We got there. Yeah. So like giving a unit a plus two to save by yeah. casting the prayer and the spell. Um, but the the other bigger change is when you become a wizard, you don't get to learn spells from your battle tome. Correct. You know the basic universal spells, yep. and that's it. You don't get the enhancement. And I think yeah. that's great. I think that's a great change. Yep. It's a. Uh, it's like yeah. It's a big deal because. Yeah, you says, take a says, take a fighter and get make him a wizard. Like yeah, it says they know arcane bolt, mystic shield, and they can attempt to summon an endless spell. Sure, because they have the yeah. faction keyword, which you've already paid for anyway. Right, so it's fine. Yeah. I, I love that change. I love that they that they're they're willing to slap down um, the universal artifacts and spells they, and stuff from being too good. Couple because there was an artifact last edition that whose ward save was just better than anything, Every, yep. and so everyone took it. Yep. Um, it was going back to the old Warhammer Fantasy days. It was everyone took Power Scroll or everyone took uh, Armor of Destiny or yeah. you know, Armor of Destiny. What was it? Whatever. Yeah. Glistening Armor. Glistening Armor. What, what Shield? I don't know. Whatever it was. So they're all. They were yes. You were. They were generic artifacts. Were just straight up better than than book artifacts. They don't. They want were that. Reckoner Bank Busters. So there were four of them in every deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad. I'm glad they did that because that's a good change. Yeah. Um. Uh, the other changes we'll see. Uh. I, for the most part, the points changes are. Fine. And it, Only things that deserved it went up, I think. And it, and the fact that they review this so frequently. Yeah. And I know because there's like gripes immediately. Like, oh, I thought this would be hit harder or buffed better. And it's like, well, but they do these reviews so frequently now. Yep. And the people they get to talk about it are these people who go to these things. And well, so- I was thinking about it with um with Grotz. Their, the Loon King faction leader was only 160 when he first came out. And I was like, that's busted. He's now 210. He's now 210. Yeah. That's a 50 point. That's a almost a, what, 30th, a yeah. 30% increase in his yeah. in his cost. It's like, yeah. Because when I saw that at 160, I'm like, that's busted. For the amount he I does, remember, you that's busted. right away and came into the store. Yeah. I opened that book and I was like, nope, busted. And you're like, Loon King <laughs> is nuts. And I was like, really? It's like, yes. <laughs> And, and he's two cannons because he shoots that good, or it was some weird. Oh no, he creates. He now creates the aura of the moon, which is insane. Yeah, yeah for one. So I'm guessing insane. he was appearing in most of their lists. Yeah. Now they'll have to think about it. Yeah. And some of their squigs, which were kind of populated high, went up. Yeah, but not they also, enough. They also had a unit go down. Not they, enough for it to like disqualify. No, they him. had the loon boss on the mangler squig yeah. went down, which he was almost 400 initially, and it was like. Not worth it. You no, know, which would be great if he starts getting play because, yeah. for one, so many people paint that model to yeah. a ridiculous standard. Well, because <laughs> so they they flipped up his damage chart, which is the biggest issue with him, and he only has its best stats when he's at like one wound left. Uh, it's like you're never at one wound. No. That's so bad. You, you're you're either at, you're either at at full or you're dead. That's it. Full and yeah, you're never at one. You're at like four mm-hmm. and then dead. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, they they overvalued the fact that his one, like, one or two wounds left, you know, bracket was nuts. so good. But it's like, you never get there. You you never get to fight when you're at one wound left. So, they yeah, they needed to lower him. They lowered him quite a bit, too. Good. So, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens with that. Uh, I think they're all, they're all good changes. Now, Almost, like, month, quarterly, I think. Well, I think at at the very good. least, they, well, they do the meta watches every month. But yeah. I think they do a battle oh, yeah, sheet, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, every three months. But it'll be interesting to see at the very next Metal Watch. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what tournaments are coming, but I'm sure they play them at Warhammer Fest. Oh, yeah. That'll be on a, here in a few weeks. And we have also their first U.S. Open yep. happening late spring in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. And they've already talked about they're going to allow people to... The event will still be ninth ed, but there's going to be... Play test. Play testing for 10th yeah. there. Which, is, which makes me wonder how close to 10th ed release is... June or July, whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like, how how soon is it? I don't know. Because it could be something where it's like, try it out three months in advance. Or it could be like, try it out. The book releases this weekend. Yeah, the next year is open. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Who knows? Um, I mean, I was thinking, did they specifically say that it won't be out by then? Uh, I don't know. Because it's like, it could be that it is out by then. Maybe that's the release weekend. And so it's like, come play test it after it's released. You know, like it could 100% have been like very close I to that. To feel like, I feel like they won't make people show up with 10th at legal list to that. Right. Unless they give us those rules like tomorrow. Because mm-hmm. um, that's a big ass. I already think that's going to be tough for the tournament schedule in general because they've got three U.S. Opens plus their championship mm-hmm. planned for this year, right? And so you're going to have to get 10th at rules out and get all those tournaments when's, on that. When's the right time to release it is yeah. the question. Because it's you're right. Because people need to actually have a chance to play it and yeah. learn the rules. And and so 
again, I'm going to compare to like Magic the Gathering. Now, there is one thing they do that's a little unique, and every Pro Tour event is based around a new set's release. So the next Pro Tour event is in May in Minneapolis, and it's called Pro Tour March the Machine. It's based on the new set, which comes out here in a couple weeks. It really starts next weekend. And But they like the Pro Tour to be a format with a new set when it's standard uh, constructed. So there is precedent for that. But I think getting people ready with cards is maybe a little easier than getting people ready with models, mm-hmm. especially when there's that many armies. I mean, un- the the comparison would be if you got the cards and they were blank, and then you had to go and you had to draw the card with paint yep. to get the card ready to be played. <laughs> yep. You know, like that would be like the comparison is like yeah. the cards are ready to go right out of the pack. Yeah. You just got to collect the right ones. Yeah. And, you know? and they kind of like that there's some newness to the format. So like people have to figure out as they're going that first time mm-hmm. um, the format's changed. But Warhammer, you kind of need there to be the format has to be kind of solved before you run an event. Right. <laughs> I mean, otherwise, yeah, people won't have the models because their indexes could drop or whatever they're doing. And all of a sudden... You have 500 people that were going to be at an event, and now they... And can we talk about the indexes for a second? Okay. So I know there are a lot of concerns that, for things like Space Marines, is the best example of it, where your army is broken up into... Or, you, like, your book is going to be broken up into lots of sub-factions because there's a lot of different Space Marines, and Chapters, they play yeah. different ways. Can we just address the fact that they are, I guarantee it, going to have chapters again for Space Marines... In, someone, in the very near future? I think they won't. A lot of people do not. A lot of people think, oh, with well, the new Space Marine book that comes out, you're going to have a book that's Space Marines. It doesn't matter what color they are. They are just Space Marines. But that's not based on anything. Right? No, just, no, absolutely yeah. not. It's. I think it's. I think the, the assumption is that because they said uh, the sub-factions are going away initially when the Index comes out, that they're never going to introduce sub-factions again. You know what, though? It's like, are you fucking kidding me? You know what, though? Didn't, like, didn't we hear that also when GW's going to partner with... Uh, oh, yeah, ITC. They're going to the take, take over ITC. They're going to take over, and they're going to come and resin check your models, and they're going to... They're going to break your models in half to make sure they're not resin. By the way, zero of that's happened. And that's been over a year. Yeah. And um, we also heard it with... I mean, we also heard it with uh, Golden Demon. Mm-hmm. Because Warhammer Fest was a UK specific event in their headquarters, mm-hmm. they charged people to attend like it was a convention there. So they were saying, "Well, does that mean Golden Demon Adepticon is going to have its own separate entry fee?" It's like, no, because you're already paying to be at Adepticon, and Adepticon decides mm-hmm. if there are any entry fees for their things. And they said, "You buy your Adepticon badge." Yeah, how much did you pay for uh, uh, Golden Demon this year at Adepticon? Nothing. Okay. Yeah, came with okay. my badge. It turned okay. out. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. You do have to buy an Adepticon badge to compete in a competition. Sure. But then you get to compete in all of them. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but it, and it'd be one thing if this pattern we see, because it is a pattern Mm -hmm. of of the naysayers, were the doom and gloomers, were saying like, well, we're just expecting the best or expecting the worst. That way, when something better happens, we're happy. But they're not pleased either. They just, they just go to expecting the worst for the next thing. But here's the other thing is it's, it's unfounded. Mm -hmm. Time and time again, they're proven wrong. And nothing really negative happens. Nope. But the next time something new rolls around, it's it's assuming worst again. It's like, why do you keep assuming worst? Yeah. There has been no bad. And there you know are endle- I mean? endless plates of crow that are coming out to tables, yeah. and the people just aren't sitting there anymore, yeah. like to eat them. Yeah. Um, they move on to the next thing. Yeah, it's insane. Um, just the fact that it's like, oh, well, I'll wait to see before I make a judgment. It's like, we've, we've got actual information already. Correct. You, you can make some judgment already. If you wanted to. And you and I even were trying to impress upon some people we talked to, like being at the event, the preview event at Adepticon was different than the online show, Mm -hmm. obviously. But it was like, they weren't giving these like, when they gave the safe avoid answering a question answers, Mm -hmm. it it was for stuff that it could be the guy, those guys didn't know anything about. They were pretty upfront about when they didn't know, though. Yeah, like they, they they were pretty explicit. It's like we don't know of anything in the future. We have no information at that's this based time. On the design studio, you know, like inspiration. Yeah, they told us when we said like, we don't know. But when they were talking about things like tenth edition, yeah, they were saying very emphatically, like we are aware of things like Codex creep. Yeah. We are aware of 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 
these types of issues and of so, special rule stacking of special rule yeah, stacking that kind of stratagems of stratagem overload and like they were so upfront about that and how that stuff was addressed and people applaud it when we were there the vibe in the room was mostly positive, positive. Yeah. the internet chatter is obviously always going to be the internet chatter um but it was it was frustrating and this is maybe the most like gears grinding version of a show we've done here <laughs> but like uh, it, it's frustrating to read that, not because we're like white knights for them or anything. It, it's just, it, it's baseless, it's foundless. And then when they are proven incorrect, they don't like learn from that. They're like, oh, I was wrong. It's like, whatever. Just wait for them to mess up next time. Yep. So, and there was a long history of them doing that, yeah. Games Workshop in particular. Yeah. Uh, or now Privateer, like they're tripping one over the other. But like, I think enough time's now gone by where we're like, okay, well, they're always let's, trying let's, right. let's, to at least make this better. Yeah. Um, and, and I have, I don't play much, as we know. I, I mostly paint with my time. You get to do some of both. Mm -hmm. and But you're always reading the rules. Yeah. And when we came away from that, it was like, they address things so specifically. And then even with the first teasers of these data cards they've given us, of the Termagant, the Primaris Intercessors, and the Terminators. Mm-hmm. It's like, I think they're holding up to what they teased already. We saw that, like, okay, this unit, like, Terminators get their special rule back. It's, or they get a special thing where they can use their little... Teleport Hummer. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, th that's so far so good. And even though Index always looks vanilla compared to what we'll get... And it will be. And it will be vanilla it compared to be. what we get. Yep. Because they're 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 baselining everything. Mm -hmm. they're, they're wiping everything prior yep. so that we don't have issues of, like... Seventh Ed rules being imported over and yep. trying to translate into the new edition is not working. Two and a half years ago, right. being folded in. Yeah. So it's that kind of thing. It's like yes, it will be vanilla at first. When you go and play a Space Marine army, at first you will play Space Marines. You don't get a chapter. <laughs> but when as soon as the first book comes out, we know it's going to be <gasps> Space Marines. Right, chapters are going to be in there. And yep. what are they going to do? Like they said. You'll have a data sheet for playing Space Marines. These are the rules you get for being a Space Marine chap you know, a yep. Space Marine Army. What's well, like, well, I want to play White Scars or I want to play Raven Guard instead. What happens? Get rid of that sheet for Space Marines. Here's your Raven Guard sheet. Yep. And what is it? It might have three or four, you know, or fifty percent of the sheet might be the same as Space Marines. But it's not saying add these rules to the Space Marines sheet yeah. in order to play your new chapter. It's like, no, get rid of what is, whatever was in the other one. Now you have this one to play with, and everything you get is right here. And No more, no less. And you know what? It, I can understand if it's hard for some people to wrap their mind around that, because as people who combined, we have 50 years in this hobby. Mm -hmm. I don't think they've ever approached their 40K rules this way. Right. It's always been add this, add this, add this. You get this, you get this, you get this. Extra. Yep. Yeah. And, and New supplement? Oh, add this to it. And that's why there ends up the bloat right. midway through every edition. And then the last half of the edition is always people like... Well, it's like, you know, the, the, the bloat ends up being you need four publications because all of them add on to the initial codex. Yeah. You have your white dwarf that adds a thing. You have your campaign supplement that adds a thing. You have your, your specific chapter supplement that adds a thing onto the normal basic one. Yep. Well, they said, no, we're not doing that anymore. Anytime a new thing comes out, it replaces the previous. Yep. It replaces the old stuff and you use a new sheet. That's it. Yeah. You need one page to play your army for your yeah. special rules. Yeah, they said one page will be front back for your army mm -hmm. and then they'll make the cards for the units. Now, that sound that part I'm I'm fine with. Mm -hmm. But it still has the the possibility of codex creep. Sure. Which I don't think it's it's eliminated. Right. Because it's just you end up having different book design mentalities. Yep. Right? It's like it happens with magic. Like, and magic's yep. a really good example of it because again, it's it's a thirty year old, you know, evolving thing. Think about um, you know a, a one mana card that does or a two mana card that does a thing from twenty years ago in Magic compared to a two mana card that does a thing now. Yeah, you know, it's just like oh, you have a two mana card. What would that be twenty years ago? You have a two two. Yep. No rules. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's a two mana card. Now in Magic, a two mana it to be it to be a good has nine lines of text yeah, on it. Right. You you it comes in, it's got flash, you can <laughs> it's got haste, it counters a spell, it, it makes the enemy, a card. It, it, it's got hex proof on the turn it comes in, <laughs> and it's a three two. Yeah. So it's 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 just straight up better and does way more. So I mean that's the kind of thing we're talking about that is the codex creep that we can see still happening. Right. Right. If, if Space Marines comes out and you get the first couple chapters of Space Marines, but then 
uh, Dark Angels gets their supplement that replaces the previous thing, and it's just a different chapter but better in every single way, then it's like, okay, well, that's creep. You know what I mean? Is. Your special rules Every are better than my special rules, suddenly just have... even though the special rules are supposed to be equivalent in power level. Right. Yours are just better than mine. I mean, it's, it's Dark Angels right now. I yeah. mean, the fact that their chapter gets inner circle, they get, like, re-rolling some crazy shit with plasma, yeah. you know, where they don't get hot. Plasma's bad like, every other Like, army. there's just, it's just, it's so many things that, that Dark Angels get on top of just being a space marine that it just makes them the best chapter. Mm-hmm. Right? What what do Raven Guard get? Right? I, I always bring it back to that because it's such dog shit. Mm-hmm. You count as being in cover outside of 18 inches for shooting? Woo. That's awful. That is so bad. Yep. You no, know, it's like, I, I could fix that in like five seconds. Yep. You know? Like, why haven't they? That's It's awful. Yeah. And, you know? You know, and so we, we've heard people who are just like going to be skeptical no matter what they see. Yeah. They're not even trusting when Games Workshop themselves are showing us Right. rules or flat out saying things i'm going to be skeptical about that very thing right. they claim like what they want to try to do and it'll never be perfect you can never have every army at 51 percent mm-hmm. when you have 24 of them plus variants uh but th- th- what they want to try to do for each army is simply have them operate within the core rules of the game slightly differently than each other army mm-hmm that's that's going to be one where let's see if they can do it, where, right. I'm, where I'm skeptical. Because what they've historically done forever is when a new army comes out, they give them rules that either we've never seen before or that break the rules of the game that everyone else has to follow. Mm-hmm. And so you have a time where some army comes out and it's just the hotness, where every Space Marine player is red Dark Angels, white Dark Angels, gray Dark Angels, whatever. Right. I'm also skeptical because ultimately they still need to sell models. They do. Right. Yep. That's that's how you make money. Yep. And if more of these rules are becoming digital and free, they need to push model sales. Yep. I mean, they need to make money. They're a company. Yep. You know? Um, but what that means is they need a driving factor, right? And that driving factor is things, new things that come out are good, right? That's, you know, long and short of it. They need to make the things that are that they're making now, that are coming out now, good and make people want to buy them. Yeah. They'll tone them back and fix them later, and balance them later, right. but they need to come out a little bit better than everything else, just so people buy those things. Or even models you know? that aren't that old, but maybe haven't moved well. Yeah. They also give them a great start in a new edition. Right. Yeah. I mean, they did that with a couple of things. I mean, uh, I think Sigmar is a good example of that. There's a box set that came out for Stormcast Eternals that had all a lot of the new Thunderstrike stuff. Well, what happened, like... Three days before that box was announced, every single one of the units in that box got a point decrease. <laughs> All of them, literally, yeah. that box set got like got like a twenty five percent point decrease. And then this box comes out, and it's like, oh, well, those units are all they're all pretty good now. Maybe I want to get this box that makes people buy those models because they're now good in the game. You know, it is what it is. You know, like, but making things all about the same good. I feel like it accomplishes a very similar thing. If you want to play the game, now you can literally buy anything you want. Well, and you, you know? know what? There are a lot of people we meet. It's Now, when people are new into a game, we should disclaimer, and that's any game, they usually pick a loyalty to one thing and stay that one thing. I'm a this player. Mm-hmm. But there are some of us who've been in it so long or are just adults with jobs or whatever, and we see cool models come out that belong to an army that we've never considered before, and it's tempting to just start that army. Yeah. It's possible if two things happen. One, they make easier ways to get into it, to the army, which they kind of try to do with some of these box sets. Mm -hmm. You usually get like a unit for free in terms of the price. Mm -hmm. Or you make way more units on a similar power level. Right. Because then you know if you switch armies, you switch your uh, army sheet or codex, like you've still got the same chance if you you give it a real go. Because you know what? If I had a completely different set of models I had to play in order to play two different armies in the same army, the same faction, I would collect both of those yep. full armies. Yep. Like, if Space Marine comes out and there's a way to play it with any chapter, and there's bonuses and whatever, to play all Terminators, I would collect all Terminators and, and do it. Yeah. If there was a way to do it with just Phobos Marines and nothing else... Or just Gravis. I would or do just, that. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, I would buy these full armies of just that one type of unit. 
in it, order to build that army. It also gives you as the player, like, you're never that bored because you're like, well, I'm tired of playing this Phobos list. Yeah. Now I'm going to try this Terminator one. Yeah. Or I'm going to try this vehicle heavy one. And, and all of a sudden you've got a fun way to keep yourself refreshed. So I think you're right. I think they're going to try to do that, which is good, but it also it also might mean everyone's having to spend a lot more money. Could be. Or, you know, maybe not. Maybe it, it, it ends up being you only need a couple things to complete your collection to add to your, or to add your collection to make an army work. You know, like I, the meta chasers and the people who go for tournaments. Yeah, I think they have to they have to buy a lot more models now. Yeah, because I don't think there's going to be cherry pick the best things from the codex, put them in one army and win. You know, I think it's right. going to be I think what they're going to do is they're going to make they're going to make armies much more specialized, mm-hmm. much more, um, I don't know, unitask almost. So that's like it's not like choose all the best stuff from the entire army and play it. I think it's going to be very focused special rules that the sub faction, you know, data sheets give. Cuz they were talking about doing even for even for like different squads within a chapter getting special rules. Like there was a there was a first company chapter or first company um army that they were talking about. So well, if you don't know anything about Space Marines that doesn't make any sense to you, but the first company is specifically the terminators within a chapter. Yep. And so it's like that's a whole army on its own that gets its own special rule sheet of just Terminators. Well, every every chapter has a first company. And I'm pretty sure, according to the, the Codex uh, Astartes, they're all supposed to have a first chapter of veterans that wear Terminator armor, right? They're like the ancients, the, the, the elites, you know, that, yeah. the, right, that kind of thing. And so, like, the fact that they, were, they referenced that specifically, it's like, well, that brings to mind an entire unique way of playing. That and, doesn't incorporate scouts and, and tactical marines and stuff like that. And uh, and obviously they got a brand new shiny kit of Terminators coming out, which yep. people would have bought anyway. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to actually bust out my Beetleback uh, Tartarus Terminators. <laughs> yep. Because I love those mods. Speaking of which, I saw the new Terminators have two shoulder poses. Okay. They've got uh, they've got a, they've got a higher up one and a lower one hmm. on the same same Interesting. frame. Interesting. So I wonder if that's just uh, like uh, they'll have two holes in the arm or something and you... Pick which one you want. Huh. But, uh... Sweet. Or people are already just planning to mod it, and they did some really clever photoshopping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh... No, I could see that, like, um... Giving each army multiple of these sheets, mm-hmm. like, a, of special rules as a way to play them. Um, I guess that wouldn't be too different. But... Well, some would be easy, right? Yeah. It'd be super easy to do it with Space Wolves. Here's your, like, your your Marines and your Wolfen on foot. You know, your long fangs, your, yep. you know, sky claws, whatever. And then here's your, your Thunderwolf cavalry army. You know, like, easy to do. Or, hell, even Dark Angels again. Here's your green marines. Here's your bone marines. Here's your black marines. Yep. You know, like, here's your three separate armies within an army. You know, pick one. Ravenwing, Deathwing. Do you think they'll still generic. have a general? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. I think every army's going to have that something like that. Then they'll have a specialized one for their... Their own chapter. It I think makes, I think it will. I wonder if, and, and I don't think we're there yet, but I wonder if um, I would even be fine with if they'd release a pack of these data sheets, data slates, for each army instead of a book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that'd be cool. Because I know when they tried to go just rules pamphlet back in third ed, it was actually the players who complained. They wanted their big fluff and their color galleries and whatever. And so in 3.5, they immediately went back to printing mm-hmm. fat codexes. Um, and yet now we're at a spot where people are like $55 for a codex. $55 for a supplement to a codex. Whose rules in two weeks are going to get FAQ'd and errated. And, right. and then the points are going to change at the next chapter approved. And and so um, we've talked about that, how they could leave the points out of those. I could see if they still wanted to do a book of galleries and rules and fluff for an army, but you could make that optional. Yeah. You really could just release the pack of cards on how to play the army. Now, I expect they'll release them alongside a book that you have to buy, mm-hmm. so it'll still be a million dollars. But but they did talk at the Q&A about the app and having that be more integrated into... Which, I've always liked the app. I've liked I, I've had no problems with the app. Nope. The, the, the first four days that it was out, it had a problem. Yep. And people will cling on to that. They cling to that for I, two I, years. I have no problem with the app. Nope. I've had, I have had no issues validating anything. I've had no issues with, like, 
my units or points being wrong or like nothing. I'm fine right. with the app. Right. And the fact that I'm I'm setting up for Warhammer Plus anyway because yep. occasionally they come out with shows. Yep. And, and, and they give you a free model if, with the subscription for a year that pays for the subscription. Yep. And you get both at, like list builders for free basically. It's like why not? Yeah. Whatever. Yep. And and I've I also have liked the app. Um, I know there were times when like adding war gear to a thing was but people will cling to these moments where there's a bug yeah. and they just act like that's the app through and through. Um, and they reach for the top shelf, right? They need to be fired, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're right. I've had no problems with the app. I've enjoyed it further than, than the alternative that existed before. Yeah. Um, and it's official is the other thing. So you feel a little less icky. Yeah. Also, you're not waiting on someone uh, doing the work manually after a book drops, going through and collating all the information and right. updating their their info pack for their, you know, battle scribe. <laughs> Which feels like <laughs> a torrent file almost. I know. But yeah, uh, and, and it could be they're gonna implement that more with these with these new ways to do it. Sure. And that'd be fine. Uh, I yeah, I'm actually excited for a new edition. Yeah, me too. But it's it has also made it so there's like no reason to play the current one. That's always the always the problem, yep. right? You is know it's, is it's like I mean, we had a buddy whose whose two armies that just got updated. He he plays literally world eaters <laughs> and Astro Militarum, and, and they were the last two books. Yeah, he hasn't played in a long time. He just bought the books, hasn't played with the books. Probably won't play until the end of tenth or to the end of tenth. <laughs> <laughs> probably won't play any of tenth. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fact that he bought the two books and now they're being invalidated as soon as tenth comes out had him a little burnt. But it's yeah. like. Well, what's the difference? You're not going to play anyway. That was my that was my initial thought. It was like, you're not going to play anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But it's like, you, the books are still cool. And you know what? You've got, you've got like six months to play the game if you wanted to, using the current rules. Yep. But but that's but that's the thing, right? You think about uh, when Fantasy was killed by Games Workshop. Right. They didn't come and collect all the 8th and ni- eighth edition rule books for Fantasy. Right. Put them through a shredder. Yeah. Yeah, right? Like, they didn't say, oh, these are no longer... You will come and arrest you if you use these. These are copyrighted. Just like so, we're going to break your models. It's like, yeah. no. Just keep playing 8th. It's not going to be continued going forward. I mean, I, I've been a... I've done that kind of thing before. Yep. You know, game is no longer... They announce it'll no longer be supported. I'm like, all right, well, I guess the game's dead, and I stop playing it. Yep. I've done that before. Yep. But you don't need to. No. You can keep playing. You can even... I mean, ninth edition is still valid. Yep. Up until 10th edition comes out. Yep. You can still keep playing. Which is any time between now and whenever. September. September? Yeah. yeah. At the very least. At the very latest, probably. Yeah. We think early early summer. So that seems to be when they do it I often. Think, I think, right? yeah. I think you'll get uh, Seraphin, New General's Handbook, and I think then they'll do 10th. Okay. Is, is probably what, how it'll go. Because um, they usually give us your 40K or Age of Sigmar like, rules update around that, right? Because then no. chapter proof is always like around Christmassy. Yeah. So... So you're right. Seraphim's going to be a big, big model release because they're coming out with a lot. And that's at the very least in June, right. we think. Uh, but 10th edition is going to come with a lot of models, too. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a box set of Space Marines versus Tyranids. Yeah. We, we think. know that. We know that. Uh, and they'll make four versions of that box set, right? Yeah. Small one, maybe, big you know, one. Maybe they won't this year. Special one. I, I hope they don't because it was, it was kind of a waste when they did that for um, the Indominus box set. So what do you think would have been a better approach? Just a super big one? Just, the, just like the normal middle si- middle middle sized one, because they did it for uh, Sigmar as well. Remember when they had like the uh, the Stormcast versus the yep. the Crow Boys, and there was four different sizes. And it's like, well, they're all just different versions of the of the normal one. <laughs> I don't want any of those. Just give me the normal one. Yeah. You know, uh, I I think it would just be a normal one. Normal like two hundred twenty five dollar box. You know, the ten units that come in it, whatever. Yeah. Just leave it there. Um, we know it won't be balanced. No. No, so it, it'll, it, it can't. It'll be Gaunts versus it, yeah, it can't Terminators. And- yeah, so we know uh, Terminators, new Terminators are coming out. We know there's a new, at least two new characters coming out for Space Marines. Mm-hmm. The Terminator um, Librarian and yeah. the um, the Phobos Lieutenant, the new yeah. one with the Mister Knife, the the the, 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 the the tyrannical war vet, yeah, uh, Phobos Lieutenant. But what else? Did we see anything else? Oh, there's a new Dreadnought, a new, a new Rifleman Dreadnought, right. But we didn't see another infantry unit, did we? I don't think we did. I don't think so. Well, actually, I take that back. There was a, a normal intercessor type guy with a Primaris flamethrower. That's right. So I wonder if we're going to get a flamethrower unit called um, Flaminators or something. <laughs> flame executioners. Flame flame executioners. <laughs> done. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Uh, 
So that, we could see that. That could be it could be a special weapons unit, like four or five guys with, yeah. with that. It could be it could be they're gonna let the intercessor squad feel like a more traditional tactical squad could where you be get cool. one guy yeah. with a weapon in there. That could um, be cool. That'd be all right. Either but, way. But that sounds like a box set to me. Yep. Right? You got a Terminator, you got a couple characters, or you got a Terminator unit, maybe ten of them. Oh, that'd be a lot. It'd be five. That'd be five. They'll give you both characters. They'll give you both characters and a dreadnought. That's your that's your side, right? Like ten infantry, two characters and a dreadnought. And then Tyranid side, we're gonna have Probably, probably two units of Gaunts. To be honest, two units of ten Gaunts. Do we probably. think they're doing new Harma Gaunts too? I hope so. They have Those to. Look awful. They have to, right? I hope so. Uh, we know Rippers are probably going to still come in that box yeah. with the Gaunts. So they're going to they're going to have new sculpts for Rippers. I yeah, bet they said that on Warcom. Yep. But I think there's way more being released for Tyranids that are going to fit in a starter box. Probably. I think we're going to see that. We're going to see uh, probably the maybe the Shrike kit included. We'll sweet. see the new Prime that is either winged or not. Mm-hmm. We'll probably come in that box. And then something like <sighs> Biovore. Or maybe the the weird... There was rumored that there's a weird like tentacle-headed monster. Oh, yeah, a yeah, new yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, that's kind Which of was like... like feeding on something in the video. Yeah. yeah. So that one... But we didn't get a really good look at it. So it's like... That would be a, a decent thing, right? Like one big monster, a character... Um, one unit of elite and then two infantry. And units. you know, you know what I think. Side note: What I think is interesting about that potential medium-sized tentacle feeder mm-hmm. thing is, um, is that it's now the go-between because you have like gene stealers and lictors, which are these slightly smaller feeders and rippers, mm-hmm. and then you have great big bubblegum monster. But there was like no in between mid, and so maybe that's kind yeah. of what that is. Well, I'm also hoping that gene stealers get kicked out of the codex. I would be fine with it. I really do. Yep, gene stealer patriarch. Uh, well, they didn't Lord. have that. They had the Broodlord. Brood it's, it's the same thing. Let's be honest. Broodlord's a patriarch. No. Like, come on. But I hope Gene Steelers get kicked out and go to their own faction. And okay. if you want to bring Gene Steelers, you have to ally in some Gene Steeler cult. And there'll be a rule for doing that, yeah. Like, Brood Brothers, whatever. That's where I hope that goes. So, you know, so it's not crossover between the two armies. You know what's funny is, since I've, had, I've played Tyranids since their beginning, played, <laughs> collected, and... Uh, um, yeah, it's got to be collected because yep. you didn't play them, you didn't paint them. Nope. <laughs> my, my my second Ed Tyranid Army was fully painted. Okay. And then sold. Uh, and then I bought all in third and fourth and then sold. And then I bought all again, still have it. But there will be people who will be like, oh, we've always used Gene Steelers in a Tyranid Army. It's like, you're right. But now they're going to have enough stuff on their own. Right. And they're always polarizing. They're always either the only infantry in the book worth taking or they're too expensive. And you need to like... Make that Gene Steelers then. Make that their thing. Yeah. And then when the Gene Steelers come around to getting their release, make a new kit. Yeah. Maybe that's the the what you do. I mean, but like, why not make Gaunts that? Yep. Gaunts are still supposed to be horrifying. Well, They've yeah. never been on the tabletop. They're like the size of they're like in between a large dog and a horse. Yeah. Like that's still horrifying. Yep. You don't need it to be human DNA. Right. For it to have five attacks. Yeah. You know. Well, that's and like, that's just it. It would just take a simple. Stat increase. Stat Done. change to their new unit. And, yeah. um, and make make Hormagons bigger than Termagants. Termagants are the little shooty ones that are like swarming and, you know. Or, and then make Hormagons like big and scary. Or make Tyranid Warriors your expensive elite shock troops. Make Raveners cheap and they're just melee. Sure. Any of that. Any of those. Yep. Oh, and by the way, we have all those, by the way. That, 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 can replace, yep. that can replace the Gene Stealers. Yep. You have warriors, shrikes now, yep. and you've got raveners. You don't need gene stores yeah. anymore. You do a points tweak here, a, a yeah. stat change there, and you've got gene stores covered. Yeah. And and it would be fine because they were always mm-hmm. supposed to be the go ahead of the Tyranids anyway. Mm-hmm. And and then, like I said, then if they're working on a new basic Steeler kit, when they come around, you can make fine. can make them. Yeah. Um, and I say that as someone. We've been on that kick though about the rip and the band aid, and and that'd be one I'd be totally fine with. Well, I did hear a rumor. That things in the new Space Marine book. Now, I'm not sure because you don't know how reliable anything Disclaimer. is. Yep. Right? You don't know. But we had seen two things. We saw a data sheet for intercessors, which I cannot, I, I'm becoming more and more skeptical of it because it looked like the new sheet, but there were typos on it. There were like things that just didn't make any sense okay, on it. Sure. Uh, I think someone whipped it up on their own and it was fraudulent. Because okay. here's what here's what leads me to believe that. Terminator unit, we were shown yep. the, the the card by form. Games Workshop. Yeah, uh, it didn't have anything saying, "Oh, you have a sergeant in this squad. Improve your leadership." The intercessor one that I saw did. It said, "Improve your leadership by one." 
if the if the sergeant of this unit is alive. But it made their leadership go up for or bravery or whatever go up from seven to eight, which is actually worse. Which is in, worse in the new edition. Yeah. So it's like mm, I don't I don't know. Good call. That's fishy. Yeah. They had a thing called transhuman on their data sheet that made it so that you just ignore the first wound you you suffer every phase. Mm. Well, the Terminators don't have anything like that. Right. You know, so there was just like there was too many things. I'm not not to say that oh, if the Terminators don't have the special rule, then the Intercessors definitely will because the Intercessors are Primaris. Right. You know, but like, pri- uh, it, uh, um, transhuman was a special special rule that I think you could only use in Primaris Marines as a stratagem, and so if Terminators aren't exclusively Primaris, maybe they don't have transhuman. Whatever, mm-hmm. maybe like I could I could make excuses for it, but it's like the more and more I think about it, I'm like I don't know. Uh, been legit, but right. so I'm not sure about that one at all. Um, but then we also saw that the book itself for Space Marines was leaked, and they were doing something interesting, which was omitting the word Primaris from all of the data sheets. Okay. So they were, calling them so by they the were just called name. intercessors. Yeah. They were called eradicators. They weren't Primaris intercessors. Good. They weren't Primaris assault intercessors. They weren't things like that. So it's like, well, I wonder if they are going to be doing the thing where they're saying. These are just they're intercessors just now. now. Yeah, they're not tactical marines anymore. The tactical marine data sheet is gone. If you want to play an old tactical marine with a bolter, which it sounds like the bolter is the the intercessor bolt gun is now just the same stats as the old bolt gun. It's just Four a bolt gun. zero yeah. one. Yep. Oh, that's so bad. Well, so we I, don't know what that looks like in the new edition. Right. It feels bad considering that a terminator is a two up four up. Yep. A no rend gun. And tough five, by the way. Yep. <laughs> uh, that feels very bad of a gun. But we don't know if, like, oh, well, you're a space marine. You improve all weapons by one rend for being a space marine wielding a bolter. It could be something like that. You know, who knows? Whatever. Um, but the fact they were omitting those primaris words from the data sheets means that it's like, yeah, maybe that's Band-Aid rip time. Maybe yeah. it is just marines are marines now. Are you a marine with a bolt gun? You can be an intercessor. Well, Are you a marine, a marine with a flamer? You're now a flaminator. You know that might have been, and that you're now a flaminator, <laughs> and that might have been what they were hinting at when they were showing us the new terminators at yep. the event. When they said these are not primaris terminators, these are not old terminators. They're just terminators. terminators. Any marine now can fit in this suit because right. we made it bigger. Right. And so they can do the same with marines by just saying, by now these chapters are all either moved on or they're all mixed. Yep. So whichever ones you play, they are intercessors. They are in, they are interceptors. They are whatever right. they're called. Yep. Yeah. So, Hell blasters. Yeah. Could be cool. I like that. Fine. Yeah. Also less confusing. Fewer words. Yep. Fine. So I I'm I'm all on board for that if that's the case. But but I'm hoping that means that they're also creating clear cut uh, uh, roles for the different yep. units, different weapons, different whatevers. Yep. I think they are because again some of the special rules we saw certain weapons were good against vehicles and they wounded on a certain number no matter what the toughness was. Yeah. Chain fist. Now, always wounds a vehicle on a three up. That's pretty huge. Yeah. That's a pretty big deal. Because uh, it's like, normally before it was like, well, I'm strength four, doubled up to strength eight. I only wound this nine on a four, or the strength, that tough nine thing on a five. Now it's just like, no, chain fist, always a, always a three. Yep. Cool. Well, I don't expect that there are going to be, um, that's going to be the only gun or weapon that does that. No. Right? Like, I'm pretty sure that that makes room for sniper weapons now to wound on a certain number no matter what. Uh, they, they talked about um, keywords inside of the weapon profiles that they didn't de- define yet. Right. Of grievous wounds and de- devastating wounds, like stuff like that, that they just didn't tell us what they were. And we've seen other games with similar stuff. Yeah. And the, the my thing is, like, the few data sheets we have seen show what we suspect is a scaling back mm-hmm. of the AP and the damage, yep. which which hurts at first because we got so used to eighth was like we saw it climb, and then ninth it went it was just the moon. ninth was the most lethal addition. Yeah, so lethal, and even when they did things to make like the first turn slightly less devastating ish, it was still so killy. Yeah, and and killing stuff is fun. But it's not fun when you don't get to play your thing because it's always dead immediately. Or you don't even get to bring it because you know it's going to yeah. die immediately. You know every army has exactly the thing. Yeah. So if they're going to do A, role-specific stuff, that, first of all, eliminates 
the redundancy of, well, I'm going to take six different units that can all do this thing from this far away. Right. Now you don't get to. Now it's like, well, if I want to kill that enemy Lehman Russ, I know I have to bring units pack in this thing. Right. But you can't, it's not as spammable because the, the rule of three is going to apply. Yeah. So I, I'm okay with it. And we always knew the damage an AP needed to roll back, but we also knew they weren't going to do that in the middle of an addition. Right. So this is the time to do it. Yep. Uh, I did see, uh, I think it was the Assault Cannon had some kind of rule like that, Devastating Wounds or mm-hmm. something like that. Some Something like that. And it's like... Turn someone into pulp. <laughs> what does that even mean? Well, like, they didn't define it. They said, we'll define it later. But, like, I was thinking about it. It's like, what, what do I think it means? Well... In previous editions, they had keywords on weapons and keywords on units, whatever. Um, universal special rules, which yep. which all that really means is this is a special rule with this one keyword that you can find across all armies. Yep. You can. Armies don't have every single one. Right. But any army could have these keywords. Yep. Uh, they're not faction-specific ones. And we'll define them here in the rule book. And stuff like War Machine wasn't it? stuff like Tough. Yes, or that kind like of thing. Yeah. Exactly. One of them, though, was Rending. Yeah. Rending meant if you rolled a six to wound, it was increased uh, AP on the yep. weapon. Well, it was really good in that edition when they had USRs because the way that saves worked were all or, or nothings. Yep. Uh, it wasn't like, improve your Rend by two. It was, it, was, it was like, no. You ignore any save that is a two plus or worse. Yep. <laughs> it's like fool. So nothing in the in the in the in the game gets a, gets a save unless you have an invulnerable save. Right. So I'm wondering if devastating wounds, whatever the thing was, is something like that. Where devastating wounds is a new keyword that we're going to see that says six is to wound. You can you don't get an armor save because it like critical hits you and it punches through your armor. Or if it's something like uh, six is to wound or just a mortal wound, or something like that. Because I don't uh, I don't think mortal wounds are going away. I really don't. Yeah, Mortal wound as a, as a as a as a um, I don't know what you want to call it, a, like a game term or like a function in the game is is pretty standard, right? Yep. Like we've had it even back in like fifth edition. I want to say when Grey Knight power weapons were like no saves allowed versus this weapon. Yeah, they were doing mortal wounds. Yep, what we know is mortal wounds now, right? Uh, people have theorized that, well, with psychic phases going away and psychic powers now don't just do mortal wounds, I you know, I guess mortal wounds are going away. It's like, they don't need to at all. No. A psychic weapon that you use in the shooting phase instead of the psychic phase could still just do mortal wounds. Yep. Like, what's stopping that from happening? Nope. Oh, you hit with this weapon? Take this many mortal wounds then. You know, I'd, you know? Be, I'd be interested to... I should have asked them... Um, why they made that decision. And the reason I say that is because they went a few editions where psychic powers were just abilities that certain units could use in certain phases. Right. Whether it was like, you know, in the shooting phase, you get a bolt of some kind that does a thing, or in the combat phase, you give a buff to a unit. Um, And then they went back to giving us a psychic phase again. Right. Now they decided we didn't like it. I don't like phases. I don't don't like, I, I don't know if I like the phases. Um, I, in, including in Sigmar, I don't know if I like the phases. Like the hero phase. Yeah, and... like it feels like they're they're breaking out from the hero phase anyway by saying, "Well, what do you do in the hero phase? A heroic action, sure." But you, the monsters rampages happen in, in a different phase. All of your command abilities now you don't like throw them out as buffs in the in the hero phase. Now you happen they happen in the phase that they're being used mm. for the most part. There are so few hero phase command abilities now that it's like. So maybe. So the only thing we do now is magic. So maybe we don't like. Maybe what the, and they might have gotten that feedback somewhere. Yeah, and it also could just be their R and D group didn't like it, but it could be they didn't like that. Start of the turn, put up all my powers. Yeah, go. Well, in in forty k, you move first and then you put up yeah, all your powers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, but I, in that system, it's a little bit better because it's basically psychic phases, beginning of the shooting phase. Right. You know. So more shooting. So it's like yeah. okay, well that makes sense where it is there. Where Sigma is like start of the turn. Hero phase, do all your things. It's like, I'm not in range to cast like or cast my spells though. <laughs> Move in range. Well, yep. now they're in range to charge me. Yep. Oh, if your spell is 12 inch range, useless then. <laughs> Six inch range, even more useless. Because <laughs> I'm never going to be able to move and then wait a turn to cast a six inch range spell. Right. So I, I hope they do the same thing in Sigmar, just because it's like maybe some things you need to remain stationary for in order to do it, and that acts like a phase. You know, or something like, I, 
I don't know. I'm going to go a little bold here, and I just thought of this. But other games do this. I almost wish more super-powered things like that, which they can be, were a once-per-game. And, like, mm-hmm. there's people in 40K in particular who like their spammable things. Yeah. We heard people who argued they wish a unit cost one or two points less per model and didn't have a gun, just so they were cheaper. And they could put more of them to take objectives. Yeah. They wish... <laughs> They wish they didn't have units, uh, uh, limits of three of a type of unit. They wish they could just spam 12 of the same thing. Um, and I am okay with with powers being the same. If you have this really powerful ability, I almost wish they were a little more like feet turns where it's like, well, you get this one turn where your guy can do a thing. Mm. You know, Gaskell's Wog used to be that way. Yep. It was like, once per game, he's super, the rest of the game, he's a guy. Um, so I don't know. I'd be okay with that, uh, just so that you weren't getting every turn you have the most powerful thing and because yeah. i'm sure we're going to see that still oh yeah i mean it's some psychers every come turn out who has a power tigerius is going to come out so good and he's going to be able to shoot mind bullets every single shooting phase right and it's going to be so reliable to get off because he's going to have a plus four to cast it right so it's basically just a shooting gun yep another gun that he has wounds. it does mortal wounds yep. and all of a sudden his 120 point cost is like well he should be with like 240 because yeah. he's just more wounding everything <laughs> to death and he can't be targeted because he's a character and yep. you know whatever yeah, I'm sure it'll be like that, yeah. but we'll see. You could do that anyway already. Yeah, but I'll be interested to see what what their idea of our units are going to be more role specific. Yeah, is because again that eliminates some spamming when it's like, well, I need to punch armor, but I also need to take objectives. Well, I also need to buff my backline. Well, I also need to. I need to have mobility. I need to be yeah. able. To, yeah, it's all this kind of stuff. I mean, it might for at least for a little while. It'll feel like. Um, pioneer, you know? Okay. It'll be a little bit like exploring to find what works in this new edition for a little bit. I hope so. And I do like that about a new edition. Yep. When it's when it's not solved. and You don't know what the best army is and the best list is. And the way they tried to keep things from being solved was having a new codex come out every few right. weeks. I don't know if that's the right way to do it. Right. I, I would rather... Uh, it's like this, where everyone's on this new rules slate, this new way to play, and every unit is scaled back maybe in their punch, but they've got a role, and now you have to figure out how important that role is. Right. So. And and what other people are going to bring to figure out how much of that role you need to bring in general, and then still be able to accomplish your missions. And Yeah, I, I like this this Wild West kind of yep. uh, uh, era in a game. And no, I don't like think it'll be dumbed down at all. Right. In fact, I think some of this will seem overwhelming. I think it's going to be super complicated at yep. first, because it's, like, it's different and new. You know, like it's different from what we're used to. That said, there there'll are... be new things that people will forget to do in in a, in the movement phase because it's like, oh shit, that's when I need to use my my power. Yeah. Oh, it's I missed my psychic gun in the shooting phase. Or you're still thinking of how it used to play. Or... Right. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. And and we can say there are some things they pulled from Age of Sigmar, I think, because that's just where rules seem to. It's like a done. test bed a it little bit. Right. Kind of. Or you know, they they do something different, or or they try something out there because it's not. 40k. You yep. can test it over here, and they like it, and then they're like, "Yeah, let's let's Do implement like that. that." Yeah, and you know, um, I think there's something we should implement too here mm-hmm. soon because I'm feeling ready to explore new grounds. Mm-hmm. I could go for a burrito. Yeah, let's All do right. it. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed. Check out our new episodes every Friday on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Audible, or on Podbean. You can also follow myself and Llama on Instagram for more. We are at Hyena Paints Minis and at Llama Paints Minis. And as always, we'll catch you next time.